watching this. Alright. There's a certain beauty that exists in works of media that can both scare and engage you. What the fuck is that? The hot milk meme. Lights off, blanket on, soaking up content from the darker side of the world that what we the all fuck live was in that? has blessed me with both memories and scars that will live with me for a lifetime. I love to be scared, and given the fact that you're here tonight, it's safe to assume that you do too. I started this series back in 2018. Because there was a sentient talking tit. It was quite disturbing. You know what? You don't have to worry about that anymore because you're fucking out of here. You don't have to worry about that anymore, okay? See ya fucking later. Because there were a few creepy oddities that I found back at that point in time. But little did naive me know that if you do a bit of digging, you'll unearth a bit more than you were ever prepared for. Dude, these videos Tonight, are so good. I aim to celebrate the 10th episode of this series with some of the most bone-chilling discoveries that I've come across to date. Mm -hmm. I mean that. If you're here for a casual viewing experience, I suggest you leave now. Oh, shit. Okay. It's time to get into five more hand-picked and disturbing things from around the internet. All right, so this is like hardcore shit. How does Subway taste? I'll be back after your answer. <laughs> the popularity of doorbell cameras has been on the rise since the mid-2010s. Being utilized as tools that can monitor your home. You guys have way. a doorbell? Ugh. Residents that own them have some incredibly <laughs> bizarre what footage. What the fuck? While a disturbing masked figure, a TV man, and a girl stumbling onto someone's porch are some of the most notable bits of video. A TV man. <laughs> I want to see this one. I want to see that one. What the fuck is that? TV man? Watch out, Slender Man. A new contestant has arrived. And a girl stumbling onto someone's porch are some of the most notable bits of video out there. They pale in comparison to how unnerving the following footage is. On the night of November 12th, 2019, at 11.11 p.m., a family in Los Angeles heard screaming that sounded like a kidnapping or a murder was taking place. After the initial shock of hearing it, they went out to their porch in hopes of witnessing what was unfolding. Man, I want to see the TV, man. Holy fuck. Shortly after this incident, the police were called out to location to investigate. They questioned residents and inquired with the surrounding homes on if they too had a doorbell camera. However, not much came of it aside from a few eyewitness accounts. Those that were able to catch a glimpse of the chaos claimed that the vehicle in question was an unknown white hatchback. Apparently, while the woman was screaming for help, a man in the driver's seat was apologizing nonstop before the vehicle sped off out of earshot. As of writing, this investigation is ongoing. Surprisingly, updates have been sparse, leaving various onlookers frustrated at the lack of a resolution. Wait a minute, so they never even found the out? The woman's screams were bone chilling, and unfortunately, without a conclusive lead so far, we're merely left to keep an ear out, hoping that she made what it out of that fuck? situation unharmed. So we know nothing? Well, that's fucking... Oh, ghost in the attic. 
Well, that's fucking depressing. That something like that can happen and we don't even know anything about it? On June 26, 2019, a Redditor named Bleachpong would make a post that would quickly shoot to the top of the r slash paranormal subreddit. It bears the title. After years of hearing weird noises in our house, we captured something eerie on video. Here, they go forth to explain a bit of backstory about some strange happenings that have played out in their home while accompanying this entire post with an extremely eerie video. I gotta join that subreddit. In that Paranormal. backstory, they explain the following. I believe in ghosts, man. Ghosts are real. You guys know that? Ghosts are real. So are aliens. First of all, I've never believed in ghosts, and I don't consider my home to be a creepy place at all. The house was only built about nine years ago, and as far as I know, the land it's on doesn't have a dark history of any kind. However, ever since we moved in, we've experienced some strange things. The weirdest part is most of what we've experienced involves toys. Aside from one time, my brother says he clearly heard our dad calling his name from downstairs, only to find out he was the only one home. Oh, that's one recurring thing we've heard tons of times over the years is the sound of someone digging around in this big plastic tub of Lego pieces. When we were kids, we all collected and built bionicles all the time in our playroom upstairs. The sound of shifting the pieces around to look for a part makes a very loud and distinct noise that everyone in our house became familiar with, but it was common for us to hear it when we were certain that no one was up there. When we got older, we stored our vast collection of bionicles and tub of loose parts in a long closet, and we've continued to hear the noise coming from there. Did you guys play with then. Legos? Dude, I've I We've always been confused and Legos weirded out by the sound, kid. but we never I bothered to record the noises Legos. just because everyone in our house has heard it firsthand and a recording of the sound of Legos in the next room didn't seem like it would interest anyone else. We told a friend about this, who thought it was crazy and insisted that we record it next time. Not long after that, both of my brothers were watching TV and heard the sound down the hall. They immediately started recording and we got pretty decent audio of the noise. I want to reiterate that we've never felt unsafe in our home. We're not bothered by the things we've experienced, but they're a little strange. Dude, Let fuck me know that, what you think. Man. If I hear a noise, I don't know where it came from, dude. The video attached is about a minute and a half long and shows the three guys pausing their baseball game because they've just heard something out of the ordinary. Okay. See the video. There's literally nothing in here. And look how heavy this Holy is. Holy fuck. Yeah. There's nothing up here. No, I didn't catch that. Fuck no, I didn't catch that. Oh my god, what the fuck? Okay, so a thing in the background barely moved? Okay. As okay. we can see in that footage, the upper torso of that large action figure moved, just like that door doll in the previous Disturbing oh, Things episode. Okay, 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 okay. People have gone forth to claim that it could either be a battery-powered okay. figure or that a mouse might have bumped it, but Bleachpong denied these both, accompanying their explanation with the full photo of how it was built. Furthermore, they claim that if it were a mouse, then, if anything, they'd merely move a few pieces around and not its entire torso. Seeing as the figure is considerably taller than an already tall cereal box, then it would take a substantial amount of force to rotate it, especially given the fact that there isn't exactly a hinge anywhere near its stomach. The only explanation I can really entertain here would be a hoax. However, that would take an extremely small and well-hidden person to sit back there, completely invisible by the camera. 
Also, the subtlety of the shots, which happens in just a mere split second, lends credence to the fact that the video that they caught was what they presumed to be real, without any sort of foul play. Since this mm. incident, Leech Pong has vanished. Gone. No updates. Holy which leaves shit. the mystery surrounding this footage stuck in limbo. I truly hope that sometime in the near future, they make a return with pictures, footage, or anything. So Maybe we can the dig ghost into this got mystery it. A bit deeper. It could have been a Mexican For all no. we know, it could be something mundane or innocent. But given the aforementioned circumstances, it's hard to discount the possibility it could have been. that Bleach Pong just might have witnessed a haunting. I mean, it could have been a Mexican gnome. You guys know about those? They're real. They're a thing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hold on. I thought I was Zemo Cremo for a second. Zemo Cremo. Up next involves a man by the name of Tim Birmingham. Hell yeah. For the past few years now, he's been vlogging his life on his self-titled YouTube that mustache, channel. Man. And if you watch a bit of his content, you'll notice Hell pretty yeah. quickly that Tim is an extremely likable guy. He's a big foodie. He loves the Detroit Lions and ultimately seems to carry a pretty easygoing life. Hell yeah, dude. Unfortunately, in the midst of his uploads, there's one that starkly stands out as one of the most unintentionally unsettling ones on his channel. In Man, an upload got nice titled, She's Still Sleeping, we're able to observe one of his daily vlogs. Before I explain the backstory, have a look at it. Dude, what if, like, while she was sleeping, dude, she just ripped the fattest part, dude, just... Hey, everyone. How you doing? Hey, it is me, Timothy. She's still sleeping. <laughs> and she's still sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> Love. Pass. Ooh, 12 o'clock. <laughs> Yo, that's a normal it, day, it? brother. <laughs> it is a... Rarity for Penny to do is sleep in. <laughs> but yeah, she's sleeping away. Wow, can't believe it. Can't believe it. Amazing, she's sleeping in. <laughs> Not used to seeing her sleep in. Usually she's up. And Man, why do I get the feeling like something bad is going to happen? But, uh, she must be tired. In the video, Tim cheerfully explains that his wife is sleeping in abnormally late and that she's usually up by this point playing on the computer. It's past noon now, and while it's not out of the ordinary for people to sleep past this, little does he know during filming that she isn't sleeping. Penny Bice, Tim's significant other, passed away that night in her sleep due to unknown circumstances. In a follow-up video to this one, he explains that she was up the night before, playing on her computer, and went to bed as usual. The two apparently fight over the blanket pretty often, and he recalls her doing that that night, all with no real indication that anything was vitally wrong. Also in this, Tim addresses some of the comments that people left, heavily criticizing him for keeping the video up. He claimed that he wanted to leave it be so he could have something to remember her by. And seeing as this was over two years ago now, it seems that he held true to his word. I don't know how I feel about that. 
I, I, I don't think that you should give him shit for leaving that video up. I don't think so because people cope in a lot of different ways. Like, let me give you an example, man. Um, my grandpa. I love my grandpa. My grandpa did so much for me. My grandpa was more of a dad to me when I was growing up than my actual dad. You know, he was married, well, obviously to my grandma for, for years, and then they ended up getting a divorce. Uh, well, he remarried. And uh, when he remarried, his wife at the time, they were on a trip, and he actually died. He passed away while they were on a trip. And she left his voice message on the phone or on the um, answering machine for a long time, man. So like whenever I'd call it, I'd hear his voice. You know, he'd be like, hey, you've reached, you know, residence, you know, leave a message. You know what I'm saying? You know, to her, it meant a lot. Honestly, there'd be there'd be a couple times where I'd call and I'd like hang up before the fuck. You know, this was a long time ago, by the way, guys. This was a long time ago. But I would like call it purposely hang up because, you know, I, well, like before the before the message came on, you know, because I didn't, you know. Cause it kind of fucked me up a little bit, but, but, but like, I never gave her any shit. And I feel like, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I, I feel like this is kind of the same thing. I, I think that, I don't know, man, I'm just trying to put myself in, in this person's shoes. I don't know how I'd cope with something like that. I, I, I don't know what I do. Sorry, Renan. But anyway, I, I, I see this guy is like, why the fuck are you leaving it up? And it's like, I feel like that this person's like, it's not up to you, man. Like let people cope how they want, I guess. I don't know. I don't know, man. Tim seems to be doing okay for himself now. Back at it with his vlogs, food reviews, and sports recaps. Oh, hell yeah. Hold Occasionally, on. Occasionally, at it with his vlogs, food reviews. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. That used to be my diet. Sarah Lee, um, wh what is that? Stouffer's or Stouffer? Yeah, Stouffer's. Stouffer's. Sarah Lee. Oh, I can't tell the others. Dude, I used to eat that same shit. Stouffer's has this uh, mac and cheese, man. Yeah, yeah, macaroni and cheese. He's got it too. Dude, their mac and cheese is so good, but it's so bad for you. It's so fucking bad for you, man. There's more calories in this mac and cheese than probably like two pizzas, man. News and sports recaps. Occasionally, he'll upload tribute videos about his beloved Penny, and these are usually met with overwhelming supports. She's still sleeping, to me, is insanely jarring. What appears to be a normal, everyday vlog about his loved one sleeping was, in actuality, not at all what it seemed. Man, I wonder how he, I wonder like how or when he found out, man. I want to roll up into Zeems' foreskin like a puff pastry. All right, I'm timing you out for two reasons. One, because why the fuck does that sen sentence exist? And two, I'm circumcised. Okay, so that's not even possible, okay? <laughs> Proof. We did not need to know that. Proof. Proof. You've made a mistake telling chat that. We all love a good night out. Especially in college. That's going on in the September wiki page. September 2019 <laughs> at the University of Ohio. <laughs> Bald circumcised streamer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, students were throwing a We all love a good night out. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in college. Yeah, I was mutilated when I was in a child. In September of 2019, at the University of Ohio, students were throwing a pretty large Project X style house party. Everything seemed to be going just fine until one man decided that he'd raise his glass for a toast in one of the most extreme ways possible. Tyler Uer, someone who the university claims is not a student there, oh decided God. to climb a utility pole, of all things, to perform this stunt. As you might expect, this didn't turn out well for him. But even worse, this was all captured by multiple people on Snapchat. Well, of course it was. The following footage is what they witnessed. What the? Wait a minute. Did somebody, did he just fall? Or was that something else? Can I watch this on stream? Okay. Holy shit.
As we could see, Bruh. after being electrocuted, he goes limp before falling an entire 30 feet to the ground. Very fortunately for him, he survived. What the That's not the to say that fuck? everyone initially thought he was dead. On social media, these videos blew up. Because of this, people honed in on Barstool Sports, a Twitter account that's notorious for tweeting out stunts pulled by college students. At the time though, many, including them, didn't believe the fact that he survived. And so they put out the following message. Please stop messaging us the video of the guy getting electrocuted on Palmer tonight. We're not posting it. In the first response to this though, we're able to see the gruesome aftermath of what happened. A Twitter user named Zushin tweeted the following. Well, here's the aftermath. He's okay. With this video. Holy shit. Tyler later claimed on Twitter, I broke three bones in my left leg and one broke through my skin. I have a slight fracture in my right hand and four minor breaks in my back. I also got a lot of burns from this and will be out of work for at least eight weeks or more, so anything helps. God bless. This was accompanied by a GoFundMe to assist with his medical bills, but unfortunately for him, this was met with a negative response. All in all, he seems to be recovering. What many thought was going to be a simple night out at a house party, I mean, in reality, quickly I mean, it's, okay, it's good that he lived, obviously, but the guy's a fucking idiot. Why would you do this? Like, why, like, why, like, I don't feel sorry for this guy. I don't. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, I'm glad he's alive. He climbed a pole and touched a lightning. Like, what the fuck did he think was going to happen? What the fuck? He turned dour. Tyler Ewer's stunt was an incredibly dumb move. Yeah. Leaving party goers stunned at the possibility that they'd single-handedly witnessed a fatal freak accident. Luckily, that wasn't the case. But this situation... Mm. There was nothing accident about this. He went up and touched a fucking a power line, man. ...serves as a lesson. Hopefully we're Holy others. shit, wait a minute. Oh, wow. I paused Luckily, that at like the Luckily, that wasn't the case. Time. But this situation... Bro, his whole fucking body just lights up. Holy shit. Yeah, there's the burns. Holy moly. It's a lesson. Hopefully we're telling others that would have any shred of a desire. To hey, Abby, thanks for the host. Similar to How's this. your stream? Thanks a lot for the host. In the future. Yeah, that was stupid. That was dumb. Now, I don't feel sorry for him at all. The fuck? The station. I've wanted to talk about this from the day I've started this series. Okay. To cap off this episode, I wanted to discuss what I personally believe to be, by far, one of the most disturbing pieces of media that presently exists on the internet. Oh. On the night. Oh God, I think I know this. Uh, I can't remember the name of this band. Night of February 20th, 2003. A band by the name of Great Whites was Great headlining White. a show at a West Great Warwick, White. Rhode Island venue yeah, yeah, by the yeah. name of the station. Yeah. The footage you're watching was captured by a journalist named Brian Butler from the town's local news station, WPRI. In attendance, to shoot a video about nightclub safety, he began documenting the band's opening song, Desert Moon. Everyone seemed to be having a great time, with nothing seemed to have gone awry. But little did they know that this performance would rapidly devolve into the 10th deadliest nightclub fire in world history. So what happened? Just seconds into the song, the band's tour manager, Michael Bichelle, set off pyrotechnics that he claimed he was permitted to use by the nightclub's owner. What he or the audience didn't see coming was the fact that these would suddenly set fire to the studio foam that surrounded the backside of the stage. Everyone thought it was part of the show.
Oh, uh, look at the camera guy. Look at the camera guy. Once people began to realize that the fire wasn't intended, a manic rush to get out took place. In less than 60 seconds, the entire stage was ablaze. While there were four exits to the building, the vast majority of attendees stormed the front door that they entered through, resulting in a dog pile that severely slowed everyone's exit. Because of this, everyone began to panic further, leading to a massive jam in the narrow hallway that surrounded that route. Mm -hmm. Brian, among a few others, ended up making it out safely. However, the remainder of the footage shows that the vast majority of concert goers weren't quite as lucky. In the latter half of the video, screams, mass panic, and smoke can be observed coming from the building that, after a matter of minutes, was completely ablaze. I remember hearing about this a while ago. Holy fuck, man. Man, I've been to nightclubs like that. Or clubs like that or whatever, man. You know, like playing local shows. You know, they have like local bands play. I've been to a lot of them. I could tell you this, man. If, if a fire broke out at any one of those, this exact same thing would have happened. Because those motherfuckers... I mean, a lot of place I went to was, you know, young people. <clears throat> You know, 21, 22. I mean, some of them were like 16, 17 years old. You know, I mean, because I didn't play at bars all the time. I also played at like, uh, you know, um, just like just like a local, it's like a local band um, venue, you know. And at those venues, that you know, nights, I mean. 100 people lost their lives, with 230 of them bearing non-fatal injuries. Yeah, that's Among crazy. those that passed were the The same thing would have happened at, at those Longley. clubs. And the show's MC, Michael Gunsolves, both of which were believed to have lost valuable escape time due to their attempts at salvaging their equipment. In a first. You know what's fucked up? I know it's stupid. I'm not debating that it's not stupid. I used to be in a band. So I so I can kind of relate to what may have been going through their mind. And I can tell you that being in a local band or whatever, like a very small time band, you are absolutely fucking broke all the time. And the only thing you have, man, the only thing you have is your equipment, is your guitar, your drum set, your amplifier. Like, I mean, for those of you that don't know, guitars can cost like eight, $900 if you want a good one. A drum set even more, you know, an amplifier. Like I bought a half stack. It's one huge speaker and a full stack is two, two huge speakers. And then you have the head, which controls the speaker, you know, controls all the sound. But I could tell you that that half stack alone was like $1,300, man. This was years ago. This was like, this was like 16 years ago. So look, I'm not saying what they did by going for their equipment was, was, was smart. It was stupid, obviously. The guy's probably about to say that they died. But I could tell you that one of the things that may have went through their head is, oh my God, I don't have anything left. This is all that I have. Without this, I don't know what I'm going to do. So while I still think it was stupid, I, I can at least imagine what was going through their head. That's all I'm going to say. First-hand accounts by Bro due to their MC, Michael Gunsolves, both of which were believed to have lost valuable escape time due to their attempts at salvaging their equipment. In a first-hand account by Brian Butler, the one that captured the footage, they claimed the following. It was that fast. As soon as the pyrotechnics stopped, the flame had started on the egg crate backing behind the stage, and it just went up the ceiling, and people stood and watched it, and some people backed off. I wouldn't have used when I turned around, people were already so trying to leave, and, that, and that others building, were just sitting just there stupid. going, yeah, that's great, and I remember that statement, because I was like, this is not great, this is time to leave. At first, there was no panic. Everyone just kind of turned. Most people still just stood there. In the other rooms, the smoke hadn't gotten to them. The flame wasn't that bad, and they didn't think anything of it. Well, I guess once we all started to turn towards the door, and we got bottlenecked into the front door, 
People just kept pushing and eventually everyone popped out of the door, including myself. That's when I turned back. I went around back. There was no one coming out of the back door anymore. I kicked out a side window to try to get people out of there. One guy did crawl out. I went back around the front again and that's when you saw people stacked on top of each other trying to get out the front door. And by then, the black smoke was pouring out over their heads. I noticed when the pyro stopped, the flame had kept going on both sides. And then on one side, I noticed it come over the top. And that's when I said, I have to leave. <laughs> and I yep. turned around. I said, get out, get out, get to the door, get to the door. And people just stood there. There was a table in the way at the door. And I pulled that out just to get it out of the way so people could get out easier. And I never expected it to take off as fast as it did. It just, it was so fast. It had to be two minutes tops before the whole place was black smoke. According to reports, there were 462 people in attendance that night, whereas the venue's official capacity was 404. Survivor. Let me tell you something else, man. Venues like that, they don't give a flying fuck about capacity. They will take as many motherfuckers in there because all of those venues need as much money as possible. They don't give a shit about capacity. Think about it this way. Who the fuck is going to go in there and count every single person? Members of the Blaze claimed give a shit. that while there were multiple exits, bouncers were restricting people from escaping via the back door. This restriction was in place up until the moment that the bouncers realized the reality of the situation. Holy at shit. At which point, they fled. Bro. Holy According shit, to further horrible. reports, the station's owners, Michael and Jeffrey Durdarian, both didn't have workers' comp insurance for their employees, nor did they have any sort of fire safety system in place, both becoming vital details in their legal cases. After this all took place, blame shifted through multiple parties. The band claimed that they had permission to use pyrotechnics for their show. The Durdarian brothers claimed otherwise. Furthermore, the distributors of the studio foam and JBL, the producer of the venue speakers, were blamed for the flammable material in their products. However, both denied any wrongdoing. In regards to official charges and sentencing, the band's tour manager in 2006 pleaded guilty to 100 counts of involuntary manslaughter, resulting in 15 oh years in prison, God. with four to serve and 11 years suspended, topped off with three years of probation. In 2007, with good behavior, he'd become eligible for parole as the judge saw him unlikely to reoffend. As of 2008, it was granted. As for Michael Durdarian, he received the same punishment, but in 2009, was released from prison due to good behavior. Jeffrey, on the other hand, received a 10-year suspended sentence with three years of probation and 500 hours of community service, but avoided all prison time due to a no-contest plea. Within a myriad of in and out of court settlements to victims and their families, as of September of 2008, over $115 million had been paid out in total due to the calamity that occurred on that late February evening. The station nightclub fire, in its entirety, is a situation that never should have happened. From the pyrotechnics, to the lack of a fire safety system, to the bouncers forbidding people from exiting, the entire incident is something that will forever go down as one of the worst tragedies in recent history. Bouncers preventing people 100 from 100 lives were lost. I would lives have fucking pushed through that bouncer simply have so a good fast. time and enjoy a rock band. Lives that did not deserve, by any stretch, to have their existence brutally taken from them. Because either one of two things is going to happen. Either I'm going to get through the bouncer or the bouncer is going to beat me up and throw me outside any, anyway. But regardless, I'm getting outside. Tonight, we've explored some of the most disturbing bits of media that are out there. Like I said, if you do a bit of digging, you'll find that the world can be dark, disturbing, and incredibly depressing. Thanks to all of you for joining me in this 10th installment of Disturbing Things from Around the Internet. I hope you enjoyed this, and if you have any other bits of dark media that you'd like to share for a future video, feel free to shoot me an email or submit it to my subreddit over at r slash nightmare expo. With that being said, thanks once again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. That was a good video. I love you all. And good night.